Hey, it's Steve. It is May 2nd, 2017. Time is 11.43. We are at 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and past four days it's been doing nothing but raining. Um, it wasn't even supposed to rain today, and I get up this morning and it's a deluge. But, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so my basement has a minor leak in it. My basement is supposed to leak. But somebody asked me, uh... Uh, something about that. They asked me what's the difference between a breccia and a conglomerate was. And I'm like, oh, this is a good chance to talk about another common type of sediment, well, somewhat common type of sedimentary rock, and that's conglomerates. So I'm going to put these two together, but first I'm going to talk about conglomerates. Okay, conglomerates, we generally use that term only for sedimentary rocks. Uh, <clears throat> conglomerates are basically coarse grain sandstones, if you will, uh, but they are, as where sand falls, here's our Wentworth scale, sand falls in here. Conglomerates are basically everything up here, pebbles and larger. Uh, uh, engineers are called pebbles gravel, but it's, it's the same thing. Um, and conglomerates, they're somewhat common. Usually they exist in thin beds, but like in the Copper Harbor formation up in the Upper Peninsula, you get huge, I mean, we're talking hundreds of meters thick of just conglomerate. And in order to be a conglomerate, you've got to have more of those pebbles than you do matrix, which would be the stuff in between the pebbles or cobbles or boulders like sand or silt or clay. Now, um, the funny thing is uh, I see a, a lot of geologists call things conglomerates. I'm like, hmm, that's a sandstone. Uh, or they'll be like, uh, it's common in sandstones, especially in the Copper Harbor too, as you get higher up in the sequence, it becomes dominated by sandstones. But you'll get cobbles in like a line. And you get this in other big continent rift sediments too, like the Frida and the uh, formation as well. And they'll call that a conglomerate, even though it's like 5% of the rock. It, it's like, no, it's a pebbly sandstone, but whatever, you know, potato, potato, I guess. Um, but um, the thing with conglomerates is that when something is that when conglomerates, like I said, is used for sedimentary and they're rounded grains. When I say rounded, uh, you know, we, there's different degrees of roundedness but um generally a general rule is like like a like a small rounded pebble has probably traveled pretty far via streams or alluvial deposits or whatever and um i mean it could be up to kilometers distance and we see that in the copper harbor formation now most of the copper harbor formation is derived from the underlying volcanics which are mostly basalts andesites, rhyolites, stuff like that, but you will occasionally see things like banded iron formation or quartzite uh, uh, class or, you know, even granites or gneisses or, you know, gabbros. Um, so you know those are transported further, okay? Now, here's where, here's where it becomes a little confusing. The term breccia, okay, is basically, it's basically an angular conglomerate. I mean, if you just look at the rock and just try to define its properties without deriving an origin it's just angular conglomerate and I don't, don't see a problem with calling a breccia an angular conglomerate um, but we generally the, the term is more of a holdover like from we used to use breccia just to describe um, mostly like igneous uh, rocks um, like in the, in the neck of a volcano or a fissure of a volcano you might get angular blocks that are made up mostly of the side walls of the volcano in a matrix of maybe some lava or some silts or, 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 or some clays that were derived from deeper down um, but we do have sedimentary breccias <laughs> see this is the thing like the Ordovician carbonates at Mathiasen State Park in Illinois um, as those are being deposited as sediments and became lithified or turned into rock the LaSalle anticline they were deposited flat but the LaSalle anticline started to form and what happened was you got this slide breccia like, like the rock would separate become and the in-betweens would become filled with silts and, and clays but we still call that a breccia <laughs> um, so it's it, basically all a breccia is it's an angular conglomerate that, that's really all it is um, 
Um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else about uh, Braccia. Um, I think that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. But um, um, So it, it's just kind of like a holdover, like I said. Um, oh, yeah. And one more thing about Braccia's, too. This is what it was. Breccias tend not to be transported as far. Remember when I said conglomerates, you get those odd class that have come from kilometers away. Breccias are usually locally derived. Like I said, that volcanic neck uh, scenario or the anticline forming and the slide breccia. And we're talking these rocks have moved anywhere from only a couple of meters, if that. Uh, like the slide breccia in the Ordovician, we're talking centimeter movement here, uh, or, you know, maybe a couple dozen meters at the most, but like in volcanic eruptions, uh, within the volcano, within the neck, um, as where conglomerates can be from kilometers away. But anyway, that's my rant for today, and I hope you learned something.